You see those airborne spores? Well, those turn into amoeba. How y'all doing? I'm Chris Ignato. You are watching Nature Here and Now. But you know what? No more introduction. Let's just jump straight into the video because I want to show you something pretty fun. Now, I'm sure you've come across these interesting structures before, well, maybe going out for a walk or looking for cool things to photograph and found one of these. Well, it's an amazing organism known as Steminitis splendens or more commonly referred to as chocolate tube slime. And if you look closely, you can easily see how it gets that name, right? So the Steminitis slime molds are found throughout the world and it's pretty easy to identify any of the Steminitis because they've got these rather distinct sporangia that pretty much resemble chocolate colored tubes to produce spores by the millions. Now the main focus of this video of course is the sporangia or the fruiting bodies of the Steminitis. The earlier form or stage of the Steminitis is the plasmodial stage which looks kind of like a white mass that slowly creeps along the landscape say on logs or even on the ground looking for fertile places to either feed or start producing the sporangium so that they can reproduce. Well, they resemble a mass of eggs, if you look closely, they're actually rising up on tiny little stalks that are usually clear. And the whole story behind that is actually rather incredible because it's a whole bunch of like separate organisms that sort of sacrifice themselves to lift just a few up so that they can start to produce the spores and reproduce themselves. You know, it's kind of like a team effort and uh, it's rather selfless. But when you see them more in their previous stage, it's actually it's so crazy because it's basically a large single-celled organism. As I always say, slime molds or myxomacetes are not mushrooms or fungi. They're actually a type of like terrestrial amoeba or protist. It's an organism that is more like an amoeba than anything else really. Once the conditions are just right, it'll cause the, the slime molds to produce these fruiting bodies, which of course are the sporangiums. That's when they, you know, take these long tubular structures that send out the billions and millions of spores. Just the slightest touch of, say, an insect or a mammal, or even a gentle breeze will cause these sporangiums to release so many spores, it'll resemble smoke on the wind. And it's really hard to resist the temptation to induce such an event. I'm guilty of that. Okay, now bear with me because things are about to get a little crazy and a bit complicated, but check this out. You see, these spores are haploid cells. They're gametes, meaning that they have just a, a single set of chromosomes. Now, when they land on favorable conditions, they will hatch into amoeba and go about the landscape feeding on things such as bacteria, yeast, grains, and even mushrooms. And as they feed, they'll divide. These cells divide into more and more amoebas, basically. However, being slime molds or myxomacetes, they actually have more than just the two sexes or mating types that we're used to. In fact, they can have over 700 different mating types, 700 different genders in a way. And that's really crazy. So let's say that two amoeba of compatible mating types meet, they will stop feeding and they'll merge becoming a single larger cell that is now diploid. It's no longer haploid. It's diploid meaning that it has a full set of chromosomes. Okay? At this point it stops dividing but the nuclei within continue to divide over and over and over to the point where they have thousands of nuclei inside this one single giant cell moving across the landscape. Some of these, at this point, they'll become plasmodiums, and some of these plasmodiums can be several meters in diameter. A massive cell moving across the land, feeding on stuff. Wow, I mean, how cool, or should I say, how crazy is that? And I'm not even going to begin to go into the intelligence of, of slime molds because it's so impressive it deserves its own video, plus I've already touched base on it a little bit in some of my previous videos, but yeah, slime molds. 
these things are really crazy and usually where I find them I'll find other types of mushrooms and fungus and tiny little worm things that really creeped me out at one point but that's another story <laughs> yeah so there you go I know I've said it a thousand times on my channel but I'm really into the slime molds or mixomacetes and this one is no exception anytime I see them especially the wolf's milk you know or the raspberry slimes I definitely have to stop and film them and take a thousand photographs because they are so fascinating and I hope you find them equally as fascinating as I do because, wow. Anyhow, thanks a lot for watching. I'm Chris Ignato. I'll see you in my next video on Nature Here and Now. So how are you doing? Mm, I'm doing good. What are you, what are you up to? Mm, just, just hanging around, yeah. Yeah, just, just, just hanging around, yeah. Oh, that's cool. You like it here? Mm, it's all right. It's all right. I like it all the time. How about you? How about you? I'm doing pretty good, actually, man. So uh, I'm gonna take off for right now. Oh yeah, yeah, right, right back at you. Yeah. See you later. Awesome, friendly skeletons.